You want to hire someone? OK, I can offer some pointers on that. But first, are you sure you need to recruit? You don't already have someone in your organisation who could step up to the role? You don't want to be this guy. Yes, we have people who could do the senior role, maybe. They have the technical skills, they know the company and our clients, and they've shown themselves to be reliable. It's just that I'd have to support them a bit, coach them to develop the confidence you need in the senior role. Whereas this external candidate says he's got confidence already. Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? Firms say they offer career development, but build obstacles to internal promotion, while external candidates are waved in after a couple of interviews. The investment needed to help someone step up to a more senior role is unappealing because it's a known quantity, while the risk of bringing in someone from outside seems better because their shortcomings are unknown, so assume to be trivial. Do you believe that someone who works for your competitor must be better than the loyal and capable staff you have already, even if they'll need a bit of help to get up to the level the external candidates claim they have? Well, it's good to bring in new blood, and if you review the people you've hired, you'll find some gems, but you'll have hired some problems too. Promote the proven, make the known investment, and hire at the junior level where people can demonstrate their mettle. You're sure you need to hire? Well, OK then. Rather than list the qualifications or experience you assume a candidate should have, make a list of what they actually need to be able to do. Split these into tangible tasks and abstract attributes. Tangible tasks first. These are the specific things your recruit needs to be able to do, so why not see if they can do them? If you want someone who can fix computers, have a few dud computers on hand, shouldn't be difficult, and see what they do with them. If you want people to analyse finances, give them a set of financial records and see how they perform. Assess people's actual ability. Abstract attributes are qualities you want in your people, but which are harder to test than tangible tasks. They might be based on your organisation's values, service or quality, say, or they might be general things like being adaptable or a fast learner. How to assess abstract attributes? Well, tests, presentations, exercises, case studies and simulations can all be indicators, so consider them. Like with the assessment of tangible tasks, see what people actually do. Firms that publish psychometric instruments, sometimes called personality tests, will tell you that their products are just what you need to assess abstract attributes. Well, they would say that, wouldn't they? Maybe use them as part of the mix, but don't swallow everything the salesperson promises. And that leaves the interview. I offer four interviewing rules. First, never be satisfied with your interview technique or your recruitment process. Always assume you need to improve. Interviewers should take regular training, including in overcoming unconscious bias. Second, put the candidate at ease and keep the interview relaxed. Applying artificial interview pressure won't tell you anything. Third, don't be swayed by gut feelings. If you select or reject based on something intangible, you're being unfair. Finally, keep your list of tangible tasks and abstract attributes handy. Seek evidence for them in past behaviours, not in future intentions. In other words, don't ask, what would you do in such and such a situation? Ask, have you ever faced a situation like such and such? OK, what did you actually do? So, if a candidate claims he has confidence, ask about a challenging situation, one he found scary. How did he overcome his fear? What did he actually do in that real situation? Asking about actual behaviour in real situations will show whether external candidates can do what you need done better than the people you have already. If they can, go ahead and hire.